Hello everyone, and welcome back to This is the Police, where we're on day 62. Twister strip club owner, my dancers are all feminists. Police academy students selling cocaine, crazy arms, flip flop. Film flop. Sorry, flip flop. All the information about Laura, just like you asked. Oh boy. Mr. Boyd, keep your voice down. Someone could be listening. Oh, I'm sorry, Emma. It's my first time doing something like this. Here's the envelope. Everything's in there. Hi, Mr. Boyd. Please write for Mr. Fly on this envelope and drop it in the mailbox across the street. What? I don't want this handled like it's some kind of game. Mr. Boyd, those are the rules. So please, lower your voice. Fine. Okay, Emma, I'll put this envelope in the mailbox across the street, just like you said. Oh, boy. Damn, Mr. Fry is going to get an envelope out of the mailbox. Talking to yourself, Mr. Boyd? And we thought we'd have to catch you at the police station. But it turns out Jack Boyd has come down to meet us personally. Do you know why we're here, Mr. Boyd? I don't even know who you are. My name is Eugene Chaffee. I'm a businessman. Rather, a restaurateur. Although I usually tell everyone I'm a businessman. Uh, which sounds better? Businessman or restaurateur? Oh, I think I've heard of you. You have a restaurant and a slaughterhouse. Uh, and you serve refried veal steaks. <laughs> well, refried veal steaks isn't my only business. But perhaps it's what I'm best known for. I thought it was time you meet Mr. Boyd and my friend here. I believe you're already acquainted. His name is Troy Star. Never heard of him. Oh, I forgot about him. Troy Star. It's the guy that the mayor gave us the phone number to in the very beginning. And my hair. Eugene and I really want to help you, Mr. Boyd. Although after our phone call, I've had my doubts. I was making love to my wife and you called me and told me to fuck myself. That kind of behavior is rude and inappropriate, Mr. Boyd. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you, Mr. Star. Just thumbing my nose at that prick mayor of ours. You keep making love to your wife, or uh, did I ruin the mood? There's a nice cafe around the corner. Spare us a couple of minutes of your time, Mr. Boyd. I don't like where this is going at all. This game just keeps getting worse and worse. Lately, I've been so busy that I rarely get to sit and relax in such a nice place. And with such interesting company. Get to the point, Mr. Chaffee. I'm busy, too. In fact, I think I hear some teenagers next door robbing and raping an old woman. Maybe she's your aunt. <laughs> you see, Mr. Boyd. Good morning. What do you want? A big mug of beer. We don't serve big mugs of beer. Then a small mug of beer. We don't have beer in any size glasses. This is a family restaurant. Moms and dads come with small children. I can bring you a lollipop to suck on. Monica, where's your famous charm? Bring the gentleman a beer. I'm sure you've got a bottle under the counter. Check between the dead cats and the dried heads of your ex-boyfriends. This man, by the way, is your police chief. Don't be silly. The police chief has a bald spot the size of a toilet seat. So, as I was... Oh my goodness, loud, annoying cell phone noises. Oh, I'm sorry. Rogers probably forgot how to wipe his ass <laughs> when you're 82 Troy you'll probably forget you need to wipe your ass at all but very well run along we can continue without you so Mr. Boyd, I don't like this at all let you know the official job of my old friend Mr. Star is to cause trouble for you <laughs> but believe me it's not out of malice it's to maintain his cover at City Hall. But to somewhat balance out this trouble, I've decided to help you out. Every day, pay close attention to your morning newspaper, Mr. Boyd. You'll find messages hidden among the pages. Simple notes, but make no mistake. The information you'll find there... Are the headlines suddenly going to become useful? <laughs> you see... I probably won't even catch the clues. I'm terrible at that. That's it, Mr. Boyd. I told you it would only take a couple of minutes. I wouldn't want to disturb you while you're enjoying your drink. Keep in touch, my dear little cupcake. <laughs> oh, yes, 
I'm quite good at crime. We just got called a cop cake. Never imagined what meeting Robespierre would be like, but I certainly didn't figure the first thing he'd do is buy me a drink. Getting them to serve a beer at a family cafe? Now this Robespierre has some strange superpowers. Strange, but not entirely useless. No, you have to be here because I've been meaning to give this to you for like ever. See, now you are a better cop. Because if you're going to be here, I might as well be able to have use of you. I miss our old records. All right, it's 7 a.m. It's time to start. Elderly security guard Robert Ch Childress saw six people break through a hole in the fence around the construction yard, climb onto the site, and start filling up a cart with bricks. At first, the guard was only worried about the stolen building materials, but when the thieves started climbing into the more dangerous construction areas, he began to fear for their lives. These idiots are going to get themselves killed. You've got to hurry. I'm hoping that we don't need that many people. Hopefully. All right. A young man who's just been robbed called in a report. He came through the gate with a knife and demanded my wallet. I tried to run, but he caught me and pushed me to the ground. In addition to the wallet, he took my watch, shoes, and even my belt. My mother gave that to me. What? We have something going down today at the suburb at 11.40. We wouldn't want some policemen crashing the party. Only 500? That's so little. One of the suspects was running around and almost fell down an elevator shaft. He's standing right next to the edge and there's terror in his eyes. Why on earth would you push... Easy kid. Why on earth would you push him? Like, you can just be evil at this point. Eleanor Compton went to wash her hands before eating, but wandered into the cafe's kitchen by mistake. I looked around and saw several bags of white powder. I know can cane a mile away. I watch TV. I am betting that this is a false alarm. Just say, um... What is this? It says dead bodies. And I suppose that's just as well. As for what... I do, you probably wouldn't approve, so I won't trouble you with any unnecessary details, but get straight to the point. For one very specific, let's call it operation, I need three dead police officers, one female and two male. Race and age don't matter, I'll return in a couple of days to collect the bodies, we wouldn't want them to start decomposing. What? Um, no? That's disturbing! This game has gotten disturbing. Yeah, I had a feeling. A man just called in. His voice was high-pitched and he sounded hysterical. Hello, police? Some kind of beast broke into my apartments running all over everywhere. God, one bite from this thing and I'm dead. Hurry. Alright, I'll send them all just in case it's like a real thing, a real problem. But it's probably like that monster cat that we got a call about in the other day. So yeah, this game has taken like several disturbing turns at this point that I don't like. All right. An unidentified man who was unable to pay at the checkout reacted by killing the cashier and then the security guard and fled the scene. A large wasp had gotten into the man's house. A wasp. Like, a wasp isn't even going to bite you. A wasp will sting you. That'll suck. Especially if you're allergic. I'm pretty sure I'm allergic to those. Cynthia Jason filed a complaint against a workman in her building. It appears he's been very vulgar and follows her around. I've never seen such a horrible jerk punish him. Alright. 
A tall, middle-aged man was dressed in an unbuttoned gray coat and a tall and a white T-shirt upon entering the store. He went right for the alcohol, picked up a six-pack of beer, then headed to the checkout. I was standing right in front of this guy at the checkout. He seemed pretty suspicious to me, and what a nasty smell. I got away from him as fast as I could, and on the way out, I told the guides to keep an eye on him. I was in line with this guy. He was obviously in a hurry and very nervous. He handed the cashier his credit card. When the cashier told him the account was empty, he pulled his gun out and shot the poor girl in the head. Then the guard who was standing nearby tried to grab his gun. The guy was too fast, and he finished him off. Me and my partner, Ron, were talking when a woman came up and said that we should watch the strange man at the checkout. Ron went over there, and I saw the flash and heard the shots. This guy was rushing the exit with his beer. I was in such shock I didn't have time to do anything. Didn't even have a chance to get my gun out. I'm about to go inside, and suddenly this idiot jumps out and almost knocks me over. I didn't have time to yell anything. Just jumped on his bike and left. Okay, well, we do have a description of what he was wearing, so that'll really help with the frames. Hopefully. When we get some. Alright, um... Oh, I pro I, I definitely sent people to... The mafia thing. Oh, well, it was only 500 bucks. According to an anonymous source, a house registered to Ernest Franklin's being used to produce and store large quantities of drugs. Mr. Franklin is a record a mile long, including illegal weapons and drug charges. Last time we had him here, he just opened fire on some teenagers from climbing into his yard to retrieve a baseball. Why can't we send the paddy wagon to pick up a single guy? Let's send you four. Oh my goodness, all the way out there. Four? I need four police today. It's a very important day for my daughter. She's getting married. I want everything to be perfect. I'm a very powerful businessman. We're talking against us. You can't get without making enemies. I could do with no trouble. Whose behavior, Cynthia, has only whistled does the girl pass by? Okay, well, we'll soon have more people to send. Although it's been so long since we've sent anybody to one of these, and we usually end up, like, losing people. Uh, oh my goodness. A woman called in speaking in awestruck phrases. I hear my wall, the trumpeting of angels. Oh, Lord, comes, build his glory. The television was right. I don't know what to make of that. I don't think I'm going to have... Oh, Lordy Lord. You guys should retreat then. Yeah, of course someone died. Well, it was more serious than they thought. Of course I had to bring them all back. I don't think we're going to get people. I don't think we're going to get to do that at all. Because we should probably do this. A passerby. Saw two strange men across the street smashing the shop window of the Mrs. Sofa furniture store. They disappeared inside. Yeah, no, we're definitely doing this, because this is our actual, like, job job. And that is not. It wasn't trumpeting angels appearing. It was a music school student in the next apartment rehearsing on the tuba. Yeah, like, I... I I always just know the one time I don't take it seriously will be the time I was supposed to take it seriously, and then everybody will be mad at me. So, all right. The club bouncer says they've detained a weird guy who took off his clothes and started molesting girls on the dance floor. Come pick the city it up and haul him off. People won't go by themselves. Okay, apparently she will go by herself. I didn't know that we were, like, now doing this. Okay, so is this the right guy? Unbuttoned gray coat and a white t-shirt. So yeah, it might be the right guy. We only have three frames, though. There's no point in trying to put them together when we have that many slots to fill. A man and woman are struggling to carry a luxurious couch to the broken window to their van. Help them load it up. Sit on the sofa. Yeah, do that. Go sit on the sofa. We're going to make a good police officer out of Percy yet. He's at 105. Once he's over 150, he's considered good. He's actually almost not the worst person on this shift anymore. Did you deal with it, Gibbons? Good on you, Gibbons. Alrighty, let's go. 
Oh, there's like a note now. That's new and interesting. We can do one more day. City Hall. Down, down, down. Mafia. Good, good, good. A chain is only as strong as the weakest link. Bike ride in city center. Freeburg abandoned drinking fountain. Senior citizens empty. Pharmacies across. We can do one more day. In this episode, I was thinking about calling it, but I have a little bit of time right now, so we can have a longer episode. That's fine. As long as it doesn't get too crazy. We've got funerals. Uh, very sad, very sad. So we've got a couple of new people on the force today. Replacing those that died in the call of duty. A bus driver just called in reporting that a group of teenagers were running down the street throwing stones at the shop windows. The man told them to stop, but for his trouble he was struck in the head by a rock. Well, aren't you pleasant? So I guess we'll see what they find. Oh my goodness, they want reinforcements. Okay, here you go. There are your reinforcements. Ooh, theft. Some items went missing at the home of Veronica Long. Items worth over ten thousand dollars. A friend and I were sitting together in the evening drinking wine and on a lark. Clara said we should try on my jewels. We had fun putting on rings and necklaces, trying different things together. We set everything back in the box. My friend went home. I decided to look at my jewelry one more time and then I noticed the four rings were missing. I was wearing them an hour ago. They're very expensive and they've been in my family for generations. Everybody out to the suburbs. I know it's a long way to go. Did everybody do good? Good job, everybody. We got plenty of officers for the next call that comes in, which is always a good thing. The police have arrived at Clara Long's residence. Her husband opened the door. She shot a look at the police and ran away down the hall, but soon returned sat on the sofa. Interrogate them. Oh, well, why would we keep the jewelry? Shouldn't that be returned? Isn't that what we're supposed to do? A theater director called in reporting that one of the young dancers had locked herself in the dressing room and wouldn't respond to knocks at the door. I don't have the strength to break down the door. I'm afraid the girl might have done something to herself. She was very upset to learn she won't be among the principal cast in the upcoming premiere. Okay, hopefully it's fine, you know. We have something going down at the jewelry store at 1900. <sighs> I'll try and remember this time. I really will. I'll really try. I completely blanked yesterday. <laughs> I'm really good at that. Alright, this isn't it though. The Port officers opened a container, and instead of some men as specified in the documents, they found boxes of rare and expensive alcohol. Soon after, the SUV approached the place, and three armed men got out. Screams and gunshots were heard. Oh my goodness. Go, everyone. Literally everybody. Our officers broke down the door and found the dancer. had simply fallen asleep. I'm not quite sure how you would do that. Like, I couldn't fall asleep in a bathroom, especially not a public bathroom, like where I worked. Like, I know work can be boring, but Jesus. Alright, so the 1900 thing is coming up. Alright, I only have two more people to send. So see, we can't even do the mafia thing, because I don't have anybody here. Let's see what it is, anyway. The guard at the jewelry store detained a man who quietly pocketed a necklace and several gold rings. The scumbag is acting all offended and refused to turn out his pockets in the store. So head of security, come and sort this out yourselves. No. Not gonna click you. My brain is, like, super mad that I can't deal with this, even though I know I'm not supposed to if I want to be. 
you know, in the mafia's good graces, because otherwise they'll kill me, and I don't want to die. Alright, everybody, nobody died. None of my officers died, which is good. We found expensive alcohol. I have a pretty good idea that we're, like, completely failing in terms of, like, money. In case the Mafia didn't kill anybody. An obese woman wearing a bunny mask entered a boutique and told the saleswoman to put all the money from the register into a sports bag. When the clerk laughed, the woman wearing the mask pulled out a gun, fired it into the air. Another customer at the store whispered from the dressing room besides the money. She also wanted a red dress, size XL. If everybody gets back in time, which they should... We can send a whole bunch of people. Because it's pretty late. We might get one or two more calls today. And that'll probably be it. Oh my goodness. I am never going to get this right. I don't know what it is. These are all of the things. Like, can I go to investigations? Why aren't we getting this? Like, if I put more people on the case will I get more because maybe this other guy just doesn't know what he's doing because no combination of those seems to work so I don't I don't know what to do about that armed robbery how'd you guys do yay very good all right let us end our day All right, we have another note. Still all the same. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of This is the Police. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'm the Purple Peggy Sis, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.